Hello? Oh. Still with the glasses. I think this is just going to be my thing now. I'm going to wear them all the time. Please don't. <laughs> no? No. Hey, Tara, how are you doing tonight? Not bad. How are you? Uh, oh. That good, huh? Mm. We've got I stuff. A, I heard you had an ouchie. Yeah, I banged my foot into a drawer, and I, I uh, smashed three toes, and I lost half a toenail, and it, it, there's blood, and it was great. <laughs> you know, just one of those things that happens. Good that times. Awesome. Good times. Just hang, you know, good times with friends hanging out. Um, so, we, uh, we've got a little bit to talk about this week before we actually get into the nonsense. Um, and it's actually going to be kind of related to the nonsense. First off, Deadspin. Um, went yeah, uh, fall down, go boom. Yeah, well, no, it was strangled. Yeah, it got like, pushed off a cliff, really. Yeah. Um, short form of what happened: the venture capital company that took over, uh, Gizmodo Onion Media. Um, they they're idiots. They sent over idiots to run the place. Uh, Jim Spanfeller and Paul Maidment. Um, they're imbeciles, and they uh. Choked the website so hard that today, that last week, all of the staff left, yeah. including a very important person um, for us here at Radio Dead Air. Yeah. Um, uh, that would include, um, where is it? Where, where? Come on. Come on. That would include uh, Barry Pates. P I, I'm not going to say this right. Pecheski. There we go. Barry Pecheski. Who uh, was the deputy editor at Deadspin. It was the informally for a while the, the editor at Deadspin. Um, he every year, bravely, this man would venture into um the uh the the US Consumer Product Safety Commission's database of emergency room visits. And he would find everything. That people had managed to stick in their holes for an entire year. Yes. And this was a feature, and we and we, we picked this up, and we, we talked about it, because he, he did the, uh... But he won't be doing that anymore. Because yeah. he's gone. Because Deadspin's dead. Because they killed it. But so don't... We don't have one easy place to figure out what we shoved in all our orifices over the course of the year. But we will we will carry the torch. Um it just means that we are going to have to do the work ourselves. We're going to have to search the database and look at all the things that got ourselves. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, big our our yeah, just um, screw the bosses, fuck the bosses. We're glad you quit. Good for you guys. Um, yeah, that took guts. And they all walked. They were just like, nah. So, so there are now no writers employed at Deadspin. No. Well, we'll talk about that in a second because oopsies. Let's get the intro going. Um. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air yeah. audience, make all sorts of find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call what the fuck is wrong with you, and they don't make the horrible stuff. If they did, that would just be terrible. We'd essentially be subcontracting terror. But at the point where the audience is doing the horrible stuff just to feed us the story, <laughs> I think we'll probably retire. That's when we should stop. All right, so speaking of dead spin. Hello, orange boy. Say hi to the internet. Right. <laughs> Say hi to the internet. Fuck you. Mom, put me down. Speaking of Deadspin, all right, like Tara just said, no one works at Deadspin right now. There right. are no writers. But strangely, articles are appearing on Deadspin with a byline of Deadspin. And the reason I'm calling attention to this article is this is not a very well written article, as you can tell by the headline to start with. Kenyan sweep NYC marathon at a canter. Now, anyone who writes sports will tell you, you really shouldn't refer 
to marathon runners with the same terminology you use for horses, especially if they're black. Yeah. Who is writing these stories? Uh, Paul Maidman. And uh, it's it's Paul Maidman, who's... Uh, they they found it because they they looked at the uh, some people who actually knew Kinja better than uh, Paul Maidman looked at the behind the scenes of the website and saw his login attached to these because he's stupid. Um, he's one of the executives. He's not supposed to be doing this, but he's doing it. So he's just creating content. I wonder how that fits into the union agreement they have with Gizmodo. Uh -huh. The group. I wonder how that. Uh... That might be. A... He knows fuck all about sports. Who needs writers? I can do it. I'm smart. I'm rich. Yeah, all right. I know things. I can write. Um, no. I wrote words. How hard can it be? How hard can it be? Well, let's get on to the the regular stupid this work this week. And oh god, damn it! Every fucking year. We cannot go. I almost thought I went through all my stories this week and we had a lot. I had to pare them down. I went through all my stories this week and I thought maybe one year we had finally gone without this happening. No, because at the last minute, at the last minute, this happened and mother, but <laughs> teacher, well, you can't get I know it's bad. Teacher wore blackface to school and rapped on Halloween. He's now been suspended. A high school teacher has been placed on administrative leave in California. California? After he wore blackface to school on Halloween. Video posted on social media shows the teacher with his face painted black, dressed up in an apparent attempt to imitate the rapper Common. Did you know that you could just dress like Common? And you did. He would. He could have just dressed like Common and not yeah. done the black. Here, you want. Like, I want to see what kind of old enough to remember this. But back in the '90s, when Adam Sandler was on SNL, he used to do Bill Cosby. And you know what he did to do Bill Cosby? He put cornstarch in his hair to make it gray, and he put on an ugly sweater, and he did the voice, and that was it. That's it. No blackface. No black. And that's and that's fucking Adam Sandler, and he's awful. Yeah, but he knew not to do blackface. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh my God. Oh, oh, this is the. Oh, oh God. The rap. The lyrics are, opportunities limitless, possibilities senseless. What will you do? Millions of people, not enough to eat. What will we do? With AI, Microsoft technology, the future is up to you. Did he get paid for that? Um. With AI, the future will blow your mind. Possibility senseless? Okay, Boomer. That's probably probably supposed to be endless. <sighs> Chris Norwood, the MUSD school board president, called the teacher's actions inappropriate, unprofessional, and insensitive, which is a very nice way of saying this fucking guy. Yeah. Holy shit. How do we not know? <laughs> Every How year. Anybody, anybody not know? Every fucking year. We can't escape it, Tara. How many years have we been? We've been doing this. How does any American white person not know? <sighs> it's like, you know, we, we've, we've, we, do we need to put up signs? Do There's we... no fucking excuse anymore. Is it like daylight savings time? Do we have to remind people, turn your clock back and don't put on blackface? Is that how that works now? Maybe we need to do news reminder PSAs every year, the week before Halloween. It's Halloween coming, and this is a reminder, if you're white, don't put on blackface, you fucking idiot. Don't be that guy. Don't be that fucking guy. Jesus Christ. Every, every... The YouTube comments are going to yell at me for this, but I'm going to say it anyway, because I hate them. Okay. <clears throat> I feel like... <laughs> Like straight white people, we should have little shock collars. <laughs> Anytime we say or do some dumb no. shit. No, no. Like, we can just get a, not enough to hurt, just a little, oh God, I'm sorry. I don't know, I'm good with enough to hurt. Like. <laughs> Man, it's like, seriously, it, it, this, this is the white person equivalent of shitting on the carpet. Yeah. Just. 
No. Yeah. I don't understand how people don't know this by now. I know. If you can't get down the basics, then I guess in you know, the year of our war, twenty fucking nineteen. <sighs> if you don't know that blackface is not okay, maybe you shouldn't be allowed out without a chaperone. <sighs> I didn't know I was doing. Th- I didn't know I was doing. Th- you knew, you fucking idiot. Fuck's sake, the fucking premier of Canada fucking got in all sorts of fucking trouble because of black, and that was blackface from like 10 years, 10, 20 years ago. You know, but you fucking idiot. The dumbest part is he made his face darker than Commons is. I thought they blacked out his face for a second, but no, yeah. he just put on that much. Ugh. Commons not even that dark. No. Uh, moving on. Um... This is one of those moments, this next story is, is, um, he had a good idea. Well, he had a good reason for a, yeah, it's a good reason for a bad idea is the best way of putting this. He had a good reason. However, man stole electric cart from Huma Walmart to drive to a bar. Oh. He said he thought he could kick charged with DWI if he drove his own car to the bar. Um. Well, as we've learned in recent weeks, you can get a DUI driving anything. Yes, you can. And Even a fucking Segway. Um, a Denim Springs man has been arrested, accused of stealing an electric-powered shopping cart from Walmart. Huma, uh, am I saying that right? Huma, uh, Louisiana? Am I saying that? I think that's Homa. Homa? Huma? Homa? 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 I want to get that right. Um, stealing the shopping cart from a Walmart and driving it to a bar about a half a mile away. You could have walked that. Uh, Huma. Thank you. Thank you. Huma. <laughs> so wait, um, did he drive his car to the Walmart? <laughs> Steal a cart and drive that to the bar? Well, let's see. Uh, the Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office said deputies were called Sunday after 32-year-old Bryce Kendall Williams arrived at the bar on corporate drive by driving the cart around 12.36 p.m. Noon. Noon. Man? Deputies reportedly spoke with Williams, who said he was at a different bar and thought he could get charged with DWI if he drove his own car to the second bar. Instead, he decided to take the, the cart from Walmart. So, first of all, good that you didn't want to drive drunk. That's good. Bad that you stole a cart. Yeah. Because that's a felony. Because that's, you stole, you, it's not like there's a hierarchy. Well, if I stole something to avoid a DUI, that's good, right? No, it's still bad. I'm honestly surprised one of those little Walmart carts could handle the road. (laughs) They're not that sturdy. At all. A half mile. Man, I can... Well, you can They're walk. For linoleum floor. It's not like gravel and pavement. A half mile. Your ass could not walk a half mile. And he was already in another bar, which means this dude was already drinking. This is at noon. At like 11 a.m. probably. Yeah. Which like... The golf cart is not the core problem here. No. It's the day drinking. Just, I mean, just, you, you could get someone to walk just a half a, half a mile and your ass couldn't walk. It would have taken you 10 minutes. Which I, I, I only, I, I can only imagine that walking up all the way up the Walmart parking lot to get the, the cart, then driving, walking the Walmart car, parking lot is already a quarter of a mile anyway. But no, you can probably walk faster than that cart can go. So instead of going straight to the bar, he decided to go to the Walmart parking lot, get the cart, then drive it to the. Yeah, this was more effort than was necessary. <laughs> exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, OK, we have another. Oh, God, just the, the, the sheer stupidity of this next one is killing me. We need we need oh, better. Damn, Mike, what? Mike just threw an earworm at me. What he said. We are drinking beer at noon on a Tuesday in a bar that faces the giant car wash. <laughs> That's not going away for like oh, a week now. 
Ah. <laughs> uh. So yeah, the next one is just mother. Oh, he's so stupid. I want to hit him. Man charged with forgery after counterfeit bills found in his trash. But wait, but wait, that's not the bad part. Limestone County out of Alabama, a garbage pickup employee noticed something unusual in one man's trash, landing a man behind bars on counterfeiting charges. When they first saw the money, they thought it was real. And of course, upon further examination, they saw it was printed on plain paper. Christopher James Shock, 32, is charged with 40 counts of first degree possession of a forged instrument. After employees picking up garbage found fake cash in bags at Shock's home. The CCS employees also found tools in the trash and what authorities say they believe was a test printing on a $50 bill printed on the back of an Alabama pardons and parole receipt. Oh, honey. From August of this year. So two That's months just... ago. Like when it doesn't occur to you that you're printing counterfeit money on your parole sheet. <laughs> you've lost control of your life. <laughs> How could they have possibly caught him? <laughs> oh, honey. And then he put the rejects in the trash. Didn't even shred them. Okay, look. Anything. I, I, have you ever, do you remember when, back when we had such a thing as a Kinko's? Remember those? Yeah. Um, you remember how they were there in college because the color printer at my college for the art students was $5 a page. They, so we all Kinko's to print out our projects. They are, they were crazy. At least the one I went to, they were crazy hovering. You do not print money. Do, do not put, don't yeah. even joke about putting like a $10 bill in, in the copier because they will freak out. Because even using a color copier to make a shitty copy of a $10 bill is technically counterfeiting. Yeah. You have broken the law. Don't and fuck with that. They not want any part of that. So even his shitty rejects that he put in the trash, guess what? That's breaking the law. That he printed on his parole receipt. <laughs> now, normally they wouldn't have seen that if you had, I don't know, burned them maybe or shredded them and then burned them or eaten them or something like that literally anything else but you put them right on top of your trash for the garb yeah <sighs> it costs how much print well what which when we were in college color printers were a novelty so it cost a bunch to print yeah and like the print it was it was an inkjet yeah so yeah. The it, like it was textured, and you had to be really careful with your prints because you could peel the ink off. It was like waxy. It was the olden days. Yeah, five dollars a page for that shit. And I, I was a graphic design major, so we had to do a lot of color printing. So the night before a big project was due, like the three local kinkos, we would just take over their computer area. Oh, investigators estimate between ten and thirty thousand dollars in shocks counterfeit bills are already in circulation. Oh, and you don't get that money back. No, you don't. You turn it in. Yeah, you you just you just you've lost. It's essentially they stole money from you. Yeah. <clears throat> Print it on his parole slip. All right, let's. We have more. I mean, at least you didn't try to spend that one. Yeah. Oh, I'm about to make the comments angry, but you know what? Fuck them. Um, we, one of the worst things about being in the Trump era is this motherfucker in general, <laughs> but has created a world where he just says whatever he, he believes to be reality and everyone takes him at, it's like, okay, well, I guess this is what the president, like we, we, we placate him. On whatever it's crazy bullshit. Well, well guess, we prove that it's not. Well, guess what? It's spreading. It's spreading to the populace. Uh, Woman wanted for climbing into Bronx Zoo lion exhibit. Quote: I am the lion now. 
This is some wacky stuff. A woman who's wanted by police for trespassing after climbing into the lion enclosure at the Bronx Zoo told reporters in a bizarre interview she was not afraid to approach the wild animal. Quote, I fear nobody, no animal, no human, no one, so no, I wasn't fearing of the lion because the lion loved me. That's why he came to me and I let the lion know, lion, I love you. Maya Artry said, uh, 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 said press after a court appearance on Thursday for shoplifting charges. When Archery left the courthouse, she greeted reporters with a bow. Um, in a 15-minute interview, Archery said her decision to climb the fence and head into the lion's den was spiritual. Quote, I am the lion now. Can't you tell? Have you ever heard of reincarnation? Do your history, young man, she instructed a reporter. She then complimented his eyes and smiled. Quote, do your history. It's called reincarnation. I am the lion now, she repeated. <laughs> Okay, few things. That's not history. <laughs> okay, in the channel, I am Devo said she, she just couldn't wait to be king. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get to be reincarnated without dying. Yeah, it's not. That's not how. What in the. What? And if the lion loved you, it's just because you look delicious. Actually, apparently the lion just stood... She was, like, dancing and waving in front of the lion, and the lion just stood there and looked at her. I mean, she's incredibly lucky for that. Yeah. Because, yeah, here's a picture of the lion just like, what the fuck are you doing, what lady? What's wrong with you, lady? Just looking at her like, the hell are you doing? <laughs> uh, just the, the complete detachment from what... Uh, that's do your history. It's called reincarnation. What? I can't even. No, like I have a theory. That Please, Simba maybe. is my reincarnated father. Because Simba was born a year after my dad died. And he's of similar temperament. And my dad always said he'd want to be reincarnated as one of our cats because we spoil our cats. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I still have a better understanding of reincarnation than this lady. I just, I am the lion now. How, what, just, wait, what the? Look at me. I'm the lion now. Uh, you gotta admire her confidence, man. I'm not, I'm not Tom Hanks, lady. She's 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 living. I mean, God, she's living her her. She's living her truth, even though yeah. her truth is a little bit wacky. She's living it. Yeah. My good lord. I'm glad she's not lion poop now. <laughs> even the lion was like, "The fuck is this shit?" <laughs> yeah, lion's like, "I'm not gonna eat you because I don't want to get crazy." I am the lion. I don't want to catch now. that. I'm the lion now. All right. Oh, here's another just, I don't understand what happened. I don't understand why this happened. Why would, why, what, 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 who profits? I, that, that's the first question I have when I look at this story. Who profits? Why did the chicken cross the road? Because it was stolen from the screaming chicken saloon. Oh. The $1,500 chicken statue has represented the saloon for 14 years. The owner of a San Bernardino saloon is asking the community's help recovering a staple of her business, a giant chicken statue. Stacy Jane of Westchester discovered the roughly 500 pound fiberglass fixture missing from the roof of her business. Chicken had nested there for over a decade since Jane purchased it shortly after taking ownership uh, 14 years ago. Jane says the chicken, which she purchased for $1,500, was the first big purchase she made for the saloon. She intended the 10-foot statue to serve as a local landmark. Once it had been lifted by a forklift onto the roof of the business, now it's missing. What? What the? Did what? it get beamed up by the aliens? Sucked up on a giant magnet like Louis Gossett Jr. in that episode of Watchmen? If the chicken was made of gold, 
I could see this. If the chicken was rare and valuable, I could well, see this. Fifteen hundred dollars. It's rare and valuable in a different <clears throat> way. It's My. like I have a friend who used to always steal glasses from TGI Fridays whenever we went, and he had a whole collection of stolen glasses from TGI Fridays. They weren't worth any money, but he was very proud of all his stolen TGI Fridays glasses. That was his thing. So, that be, it's probably in a frat house somewhere. It's 10 feet tall, 500 pounds. Look, to, on a roof. The only way you're getting my ass to, no. the only way you're getting my ass to, to take care of something like that is union rate. You're paying my expenses. How did they steal it without anybody seeing? I know what the hell happened here? How the fuck did you get this thing off the roof <clears throat> without anybody seeing anything? That's why I think aliens. <laughs> this just seems like a lot of effort for very little reward. Yeah. I mean, now you have a giant chicken, so cool. I guess, maybe. My money's on it's in a frat house somewhere. Mm. It was some hazing ritual or something. See, I don't, I don't believe that college mm. students have that sort of of, of get oh, up and no. go like they did in our Dudes day. Want to get into a frat? Dudes that want to get accepted by other dude bros? Yeah. Dumb college students who are doing stupid human tricks to make friends will do amazing shit. Just who drives by a chicken place and looks up and goes, yeah, I'm going to steal that. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's cool. <laughs> no. The giant fucking chicken. Like, <clears throat> Leave the chicken alone. That's an objectively cool thing to have. Leave it alone. Without going through the effort of stealing it. Leave the fucking chicken alone. Because, you know, then when assholes on Twitter tell me to suck their cock, I can be like, mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally this week from the Department of the Straits are at it again. Again, this is something that, that needs to stop happening. Blast from walkie gender reveal felt from over two miles away. Walkie, Walkie, Iowa. The Walkie Fire Department announced Tuesday that a gender reveal explosion over the weekend shook homes more than two miles away. Authorities say the gender reveal incident took place Sunday just outside of the Walkie city limits in a vacant lot. The explosion occurred one day after a deadly gender reveal incident in Knoxville that killed 56-year-old Pamela uh, Kremeyer. Walkie Fire Department uh, Captain Tommy Tisdale said the property owner used a Tannerite gender reveal boombox kit. Wait. Pause. What? A kit? A, this is a kit now? A Tannerite gender reveal boombox kit. There is, Why are you playing with fucking Tanner right? There is a kit you can purchase to ex there is there is a kit that you can purchase that will explode for a specifically it's for like a consumer good. Specifically for a gender reveal party <clears throat> that will explode. Why are we doing this? Why? Why? I don't understand gender reveal parties, man. Why? Why in God's name do you have to shake houses for two miles around just because your kid has a dick? Or doesn't. Or doesn't, right. What it really is, it's just another excuse to extort presents out of people. <laughs> it is. Like, you have the baby shower, and then you have the gender reveal, and they're supposed to bring a present to that, too. You can buy a 10-pound bag of this shit. <laughs> I don't know if I'm comfortable with you knowing that. <laughs> I'm I I'm mocking the people who are doing it. I'm not gonna buy that. Yeah, yeah but, but in your brain you're like, but I know how to use it. No, Tannerite's dangerous. Don't fuck with that. No. Mythbusters wouldn't fuck with it. Oh. No. It, it's it, that is one of those substances that's like that is the the uh, don't look at it sideways. Don't make it angry. It's one of those kind of sus. Do not taunt happy fun. Tannerite. Yes, yes, exactly. Like, 
blow your neighbor's roof off by accident. So, like, you had a chance that not only was there not going to be a baby at all, but there wasn't going to be mommy and daddy either. Mm. And this was, and they did it just, I, I, they, they don't say if they caught anybody. Apparently they did. They did it just days after someone killed themselves doing this shit. Yeah. So that's, that's re gender reveal party. Why? <sighs> I've never been that into, I have friends that have had babies. Both of my sisters have had babies and I've never been interested enough in knowing what kind of tackle that baby's going to have <sighs> to go to a specified event. Like, just, just let me know when the kid's there. I just, I, I just imagine people in <laughs> Iowa, the, the whole house starts shaking like, Martha, Dave's baby's got a dick. You know, it's just a regular thing that happens. What is, what is wrong with you people? We are, we are fucked up. Can't you just send a Facebook invite like a fucking normal person? Or just send out baby announcements when there's baby. Because I promise you, nobody gives a fuck as much as you do. Don't need to detonate a goddamn I am very excited for all the people I know who have had babies. But nobody cares as much about your baby as you do. No. I don't. Nobody cares about my cats as much as I do. Like, I talk about my cats a fucking lot. Nobody cares as much as I do. Well, like, I, would say, I would say you're a little bit different because the cats have a little notoriety, so your cats do have some fans. True. That's true. But, but like... Normally, nobody gives a shit about your cats. No. Yeah. And, and people are going to be mad at me for comparing my cats to kids, but they're my babies. So it's whatever. It's about the same damn like, thing. Your baby is very cute, except it probably looks like Winston Churchill because they all do. From the green <laughs> they do. They, they really do. I'm sure your baby is a special angel sent directly from heaven. Nobody cares. So I guess I guess the first thing we learned this week is um, you don't need to announce the genitals of your child. With no. unstable explosives. Just be like, look, I had a baby. And people will be like, cool. What a cute baby. Yay. This is becoming a thing and it should not. This is like an only in America fucking thing. Yeah. Maybe to, maybe to really mock it, we should just start having gender reveal parties like every couple of years. I'll just be like, hey, I got a dick. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much men. <laughs> <Here>. <laughs> That's just men. We're um, having gender reveal parties all the fucking time. <laughs> We've learned that some people will steal absolutely fucking anything, even if it's a 10-foot, 500-pound chicken. Yeah. Um, we've learned how reincarnation does and does not work this week. And um, it's not history. It's not it's not history. Why don't leave the lion alone? Leave the fucking lion alone. Um, we've learned that. Don't leave evidence in the open. On it's your parole slip. On your parole slip. What are you doing? Ugh. We have learned um, to, just because you avoided one crime by committing a different crime does not mean you're not still guilty of the second it crime. It doesn't count. It's not like you canceled them out. You know, yeah. I did. I did the crime for good. It's not. It doesn't you still stole the fucking Walmart scooter? Yeah. Um. We. You looked really uncool pulling up to that bar. We've learned that every goddamn year on Halloween, somebody's some motherfucker's gonna do blackface. Forever. For fucking ev forever. Forever. And. <laughs> And finally, this week, we learned that um, Jim Spanfeller is an herb. Herb? 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 Same difference. He sucks. Herb? Herb. What does that mean? <laughs> it's a thing. You missed. It, it's a thing that happened. Okay. Um, just, just Google Jim Spanfeller is a, is, a, is a herb, and you'll see. It's a thing. Is that going to give me porn? It's not going to give you porn, surprisingly. Okay. It will it's not, not like you... Tub Girl? No, it's not. Okay. Will not give you porn. Okay. Even though they're desperately trying to hide it as though it were porn, it's just deeply embarrassing to a rich white guy. Oh, well, that's okay then. That kind of is porn. 